Ozone is a very high potency molecule made out of oxygen. And, uh, and it's been used throughout the world for decades. It's new to the United States. I actually brought this therapy to the United States about seven, eight, nine years ago when I formed the American Academy of Ozone Therapy. Um, and now we have in excess of a thousand doctors here in the US that are utilizing ozone as a medical therapy, but it's just new here. It's not new around the rest of the world. Around the rest of the world, it's actually been there since the 1800s, if you wanna know the truth. Uh, but people should know that when we talk about ozone as a, as a medical therapy, we're talking about a high potency version of oxygen. Normally, oxygen travels in pairs. So every oxygen atom finds another oxygen atom and uh, they get together kind of, and, and they form a bond together. And the reason that is has to do with the amount of electrons that each atom has. They don't have enough electrons, but if they get together, they can share electrons. So that's your standard, uh, very stable form of oxygen. We call it O2 because there's two atoms of oxygen in there. That's what we're breathing right now. Uh, O3 is what ozone is. So to, to, to get ozone, you actually have to make it. You can't capture it, you can't buy it in a bottle, anything like that. You gotta make it. So what doctors do is we take oxygen, O2, run it through a little converter box. And what the converter box does is it shoots electricity over the oxygen molecules. That causes them to explode a little bit, to break apart into single atoms. And instantaneously, however, they recombine back into their pairs. But a small percentage of them, something like two, 3%, depending on you know, how you, everything's set up, will convert back into O3. So that you'll have three oxygen atoms sharing the amount of electrons that make two oxygen atoms stable. So that three oxygen atom set up, it's not very stable. It's a highly reactive molecule. O2, pretty stable. If I take O2 and say inject it into you, it'll more or less just sit there. It's not gonna do much. But I take O3 and inject it into you. Uh, instantaneously, there's an enormous amount of what we call oxidative signaling going on in your entire body, almost instantaneously. Almost as if you could kind of co compare it to an electrocution. Let's say you had lightning strike your body. Instantaneously, it pervades every aspect of your physiology. This is what it's like when you inject ozone into the human body, and there's lots of ways to do that. But one of the interesting things is because it's oxygen, it's a very potent stimulator of mitochondrial function. So, so, so what, what, what it's like for me is, and what I've learned is the reason, I mean, there's lots of reasons people get sick, but the very bottom, the very core reason people get sick is that their mitochondria don't work so well. They don't have the energy that required to stay well. So you could, you can clearly make the statement, and this is about as close to being hundred percent true as anything you could say. There's no possible way in the world that anybody who's sick with anything significant, and by that I mean a cardiovascular disease or a diabetes or cancer or autoimmune disease or whatever, 100% of the time they got bad mitochondria, 100% of the time. And there's no way they stand any chance at all of getting well unless the mitochondria are improved. So it's sort of a baseline foundational therapy that you can use essentially on every sick person there is. You just can't help yourself, can you?